So I recently picked up this uh, Wi-Fi antenna to take a look at and uh, I picked this up off eBay from a uh, seller here in the UK. It was £4 with uh, free shipping but I have seen uh, sellers trying to charge a lot more for this on uh, other websites and especially Amazon. So it claims to have 8 dBi and a 60 degree directional pattern and it's actually made by a uh, company Universal Electronics in the Netherlands. Now one of the first things that I noticed when I uh, got this uh, antenna is the retail packaging here has a picture of the uh, classic Linksys wireless router in the background there but uh, the uh, connection on this antenna is an RP SMA and the connection on the uh, Linksys routers were all RPTNC so to connect this antenna to a Linksys router you're going to have to buy an adapter so a little bit misleading there with the photograph. So before I actually open this up and have a look inside I'm going to give it a uh, quick test against a uh, simple dipole antenna here. I've got a test router set up downstairs so uh, let's have a look and see what the signals are like. So here's a test with the one for all antenna then and uh, I've also got a test router set up downstairs it is literally just underneath me here in the lab and that's coming up at the high 70s which to be quite honest with you is pretty poor and uh, at the moment I'm only picking up six access points they, the signal strength is pretty good on all of them but uh, I would expect quite a few more access points than that especially for a directional antenna so what I'll do now then, I'll uh, disconnect the one for all one and I'll just put the uh, simple dipole antenna on so we can get a comparison between the two. So you can see there the actual dipole antenna is performing much better than this uh, directional one for all antenna so I think it'll be really interesting to have a look inside and see what it actually is. The, the test router has actually jumped up into the uh, 80s there, around the uh, mid 80s. So, you know, a directional antenna should really perform much better than uh, a simple dipole antenna. So I wasn't very impressed with that test at all. I expected it to do a little bit better with it being a uh, directional antenna when uh, putting it uh, against a dipole antenna like this. But uh, one of the things that could be uh, crippling this antenna is uh, this coax. Uh, it's so thin, it actually feels like a speaker cable. And again, these things are made down to a price point. So, you know, you're not going to get a good quality uh, low loss coax on something like this. But uh, this really is thin and quite wimpy and it does actually feel like speaker cable. So to open this up then it just looks like there's these two Phillips screws here so I'm thinking if I remove them it should just come apart from the main body of the case here so I'm expecting to find a couple of uh, simple patch antennas inside but uh, we won't know until we open it up. So now that I've opened it up I'm actually quite amazed what uh, we actually have in here and remember this is a uh, company from the Netherlands it's not a uh, Chinese uh, manufacturer at all and uh, from the uh, first impressions looking at it I think the blue 95% of their budget on the actual casing and uh, they just had 5% left to actually spend on the antenna itself so what we've got here is literally uh, two pieces of cardboard so I remove this one first and this looks like it's the uh, back reflector and uh, it is quite literally a piece of cardboard but it looks to have some kind of metallic finish on this side which looks like some kind of metallic paint or something like that I don't know but uh, it is just cardboard so the second element of this antenna is again it is cardboard and we've got a diamond shape cut out here in the center which is uh, more like a patch antenna and uh, again we've got this silver paint on here and we've got these two little PCBs down at the bottom here and one's connected to the uh, signal wire on the coax and the second one is to the ground plane I uh, really wasn't expecting uh, two pieces of cardboard in here at all so here is the PCB that I've removed and we've got two rectangle shaped copper pads one for the signal and one for the ground 
and when they're actually in the case they actually make direct contact with uh, these two reflective surfaces here and here so this reflective paint or whatever it is on here is actually conductive and it is making direct contact with these two pads here i've just never seen a uh, design like this before it's uh, it's quite bizarre now i've never come across this uh, kind of design before and whether it was just put together to actually fit in the uh, style of the case or not i don't know but uh, they've definitely blown 95 percent of their budget actually on the case and uh, possibly even on the packaging as well so uh, you've just got these two cardboard cutouts here and these uh, two really cheap pcbs connected to some really cheap speaker wires so what i'm actually going to do because this actually performs uh, so poorly against a normal uh, dipole antenna i'm going to come up with a uh, design myself that will actually fit inside this existing case that uh, will actually outperform this and be more into the uh, high 80s low 90s that it actually should be for a uh, directional antenna so something else that I've just noticed in the instructions, it says to get the best performance, place the one for all with this logo towards the uh, network card, laptop or router. Now you've got that logo on both sides. So you've got a little wireless uh, symbol here and the one for all uh, logo. And it's the same on the other side. Now this antenna, this is a uh, back reflector. So on this side, you're not gonna get any Wi-Fi wi -Fi signal really. You, you may get, if you're quite close, you may still be able to pick the signal up, but uh, you'd have to be really close to it. And you've got this one here, which is, uh, you know, the main driven element of a patch antenna. So you're not gonna get any signal from this side at all, but it's telling you that the uh, actual antenna has a range of 500 meters so when you're the, what they're saying is because we've got a range of 500 meters on this side and a range of 500 meters on this side when you add them two together you've got a range of 1000 meters but you haven't because you can't add them together and double your range it doesn't work like that and especially when one of the sides is uh, a reflector anyway because it's going to be reflecting the wi-fi signals in uh, this direction you're not going to get much from this direction so to actually improve on this antenna then what i've decided to do is i've printed out a uh, bi-quad here uh, the bow tie element and i've uh, printed it out on some quite thin card but i'm going to actually put some thicker card on the back here to strengthen this but uh, i'm actually using some copper tape and i'm going over the uh, printed pattern here of the actual bi-quad bow tie element and uh, i'm using slightly thicker copper tape than uh, the lines that i've actually printed on there but uh, as long as i make sure that i'm butted up to the outside edge of the uh, pattern it should still stay in uh, center frequency no problem so uh, i'm going to use this and i'm going to strengthen it with some more card so it's quite rigid and stays inside the uh, antenna case there and i'm going to use the uh, reflector that was already in there but i'm going to put some more aluminium foil over the top of this i don't think this uh, reflective paint is doing uh, a really good job of uh, reflecting the uh, rf signal there so now we're going to have a uh, true directional antenna and uh, i'm hoping it'll be a lot more powerful than uh, the original uh, cardboard serial cutout that was in there so what i'm actually going to do now is flow solder on this uh, copper tape just to make sure we've got a connection where i've made all my uh, joints here because it is uh, sticky on one side so i just want to make doubly sure that uh, each one of these uh, quarter wavelengths are connected up to each other so we've got a closed loop antenna so i've decided to just flow solder all over the uh, element here and it's really nice prototyping in this uh, copper tape because you can actually it can take quite a bit of heat and you can actually just paint the solder on there it's uh, really really nice to work with when you're prototyping antennas and as for the coax it's not uh, quite as cheap and nasty as i uh, first thought it uh, has some shielding here between the 
outer braid and the uh, center core of the coax so for the price point i don't suppose it's uh, too bad it's definitely not the uh, worst i've ever seen so hopefully this uh, little modification should improve the range of this antenna so as well as making the uh, bow tie bicord here from the uh, copper tape i've also put a uh, layer of uh, aluminium baking foil onto the uh, other reflector as well so hopefully that will uh, reflect the uh, signal a little bit better than it previously did and uh, i've also got these uh, cheap pcbs i've got about 16 of these that uh, i got from china and uh, they're just a little bit smaller than uh, the actual cardboard cutouts here but uh, if you had a little bit more time you could etch a uh, biquad element onto here and use another one as a back reflector and that'll make uh, for a more permanent antenna but uh, this cardboard one should work out fine so what i'm going to do is put all this back together again then and do a second test and see if we've improved the uh, signal some and um, expecting to get somewhere in the region of about uh, 90 94 95 percent from my test router because as it is it really is just underneath me here in the lab so let's do a second scan then and see if we've actually improved this antenna and uh, previously it was about 75 76 percent so now I'm hoping it'll be up there in the 90s. And there's our test signal. And that's 89, 92%. So not too bad at all. A big improvement having a uh, proper antenna in there. So I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, a big improvement over the antenna that was originally in here. I was a little bit surprised to open it up and find uh, two pieces of cardboard to be honest with you and uh, definitely the case here I think uh, they did probably spent 95% uh, of their budget just on the case just to sell it on you know it's it's looks alone and uh, stuff what it actually uh, works like you know how it performs but uh, this originally did perform worse than a dipole antenna so if you were purchasing this to swap the dipole antenna on your router for instance you know you weren't going to be uh, very happy with the outcome now the seller that uh, is actually selling these on eBay, he has got a few of them and he is only selling them for £4. Now I think I may go and purchase a few more of these and uh, you may be thinking why are you going to do that but for £4 this makes an excellent project box for an antenna and for quite a few years I've been into fractal antennas and I've never shown any of my uh, fractal antenna designs on this channel before but uh, if you take this one for instance this project case is really really good for mounting something like this because I can have a back reflector in this part of the case and my fractal antenna on the front here just like I uh, have done in this video with the bi quad so I'm going to pick a few more of these up but just for the actual uh, project cases so as I say, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Drop any comments below and uh, any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.